Hi, welcome back. In this video, I'll just be giving you a little bit of a tour around Contact Player 2. Now, at the time I made these videos, Contact Player 4 is actually available, and I would definitely recommend that you upgrade to that, uh, as they've made a variety of improvements uh, since Contact Player 2, and naturally Contact Player 3. I'm just using Contact Player 2 since that's what VDL ships with out of the box. Uh, but for the most part, the interface will be uh, similar between the two as far as the different areas of the interface. When you start Contact Player for the first time, this audio setup box will present itself for the first time. So there's just a few settings you'll need to configure before you're up and running. But here under Interface, you'll want to choose the sound card that you plan on using or the audio interface. Sample rate, 44.1 is typically good out of the box. Um, here on a Mac, the built-in output will work just fine. Um, but if you're on a Windows machine, you'll want to make sure you have the proper, proper ASIO uh, for your audio interface or your sound card installed and selected there. And there here under the output latency uh, area, if you're on a Mac, you'll be able to adjust this uh, you know, without going to any other uh, areas. But if you're on a Windows machine, you'll need to click the, um, the ASIO options button here to take you in to adjust the, those settings and there will be a few buffer settings you can adjust to get this higher or lower and a little bit of an overview about latency uh, basically what that is is uh, from the time you call upon a sound to be played until the sound actually comes through the sound card and out the speakers is latency so if you ever have crackly playback uh, one uh, reason might be because the output latency is actually set too low uh, so you just want to set that a little higher. Or if you get wobbly or uneven playback, it's actually uh, probably because you have the latency set too high. Um, so you'll just want to set that lower. And um, if you're on a Windows machine, setting the buffer lower will not typically put the latency lower. Or if you have the buffer higher, it will raise that, uh, that number out there to be a little bit higher. Um, I generally like to keep it somewhere between the low 20s and uh, the 40s-ish. So uh, if you have a decent machine, typically you'll be able to uh, get away with having it set around there. And then here under the MIDI tab, uh, this is something if you're working in Sibelius or Finale, you probably won't fool around with a whole lot. But if you're using uh, Contact Player in standalone mode, this is something you could use uh, to communicate between your uh, virtual MIDI cable, which on the Mac is these IAC driver buses, and I've got a few others set up. Uh, but here, if you have the, um, uh, a MIDI cable installed, such as uh, like Loop B1 is a good one uh, for Windows, um, you'll see those available here. But that's not something we'll really be uh, covering in this video, just because uh, the, the goal is just to give a more or less a view of Contact Player 2. So that's something you can research a little more on your own if you'd like. Um, but everything's set the way I'd like it, so I'll go ahead and click OK here. Um, now, let's give a little bit of a tour uh, around the interface of Contact Player. Um, now, if you want any more information uh, than what we cover in this video, you can check out the uh, VDL 2.5 user manual. That's uh, a very in-depth document that will go into much greater detail than this video. But I just wanted to cover the, the important areas that you'll need to know about um, uh, when working in a digital audio workstation or a notation environment such as Sibelius or Finale. Uh, the first area to note, this is our main control area here uh, where you can toggle a variety of things and get into a few different areas. Um, the first area I want to note is the browser area over here which you can toggle by pressing the browser button here in the control area. So if you want to get a little more compact uh, you can do that. So. This is our browser area. This is where uh, any libraries you have installed will be listed and you can access the instruments uh, of those by kind of going here, the click on the instrument or the, the multi button will function the same way. And you can, it more or less functions like a directory structure on your computer. So you can um, go down to the different directory levels. And as you can see here at the top of uh, the VDL directory listing, we've got the VDL library 252 file. Uh, that's technically a contact instrument file, but it's uh, there's no sounds actually in it. It's just there basically to let you know that you have properly updated the library to 252. So uh, if that's not there, then you probably haven't updated properly. You might want to revisit that. So uh, if it's there, you're good to go. And another way to load in sounds is by using the flyout button here. And that gives you the option to um, you know, choose instruments you might want to load. So 
uh, in addition to three I already have loaded. I'll go ahead and load in another instrument. I'll just pull up a, let's see, a rosewood medium. And we'll go into more detail about what the variety of instruments we have in VDL are here in the next video. Um, all right, there. So we've got a few instruments loaded. That's good to go. We'll come back here to this multi-area here in a second. Um, but you can also uh, access these multis. And basically, um, as the name suggests, this is the multi-area. Uh, so all the instruments you have loaded in uh, is considered a multi. So here we've got our battery manual, battery manual light, and a few others. That will actually load um, a collection of instruments. Each one of these is an instrument. Uh, and then if you come here to the info tab, um, you can see a variety of information, um, uh, how to get to uh, a few different forums, like the VDL forum, Native Instruments forum, the location of the, uh, the library, um, how to get support, uh, updates, and uh, if you haven't registered yet, you can do that from here. Um, so that's that area. Um, Next would be the audio engine tab. And uh, basically this just kind of gives you a little bit of information of how the contact engine is performing. Um, so if, uh, if it's playing back, you can kind of see, um, you know, here DFD, that's a topic we'll cover later, how many vo uh, voice memory is being used and a few other things here. Uh, so if you're curious to see uh, how your computer is performing while running all these instruments, you can come here and check that out. Then here under the automation tab, uh, you're able to assign, like this is the mod wheel, this is the volume MIDI controller uh, expression. You're able to assign these to sliders and knobs on your uh, audio interface or your MIDI keyboard if you have those available. Uh, that's something you can read about a little more in the manual. Um, so that's it for the browser area. Uh, this is the, the multi area. This is more or less kind of like your rack space uh, where you control the instruments. Here, if you wanted to, you can actually drag and move them uh, to different orders if you'd want. Uh, for the most part, they'll work fine as they are. Uh, then here up at the top, these are what are known as the page tabs. Uh, whenever you're working as a plugin, this will be the only area you'll need to worry about. But if you're working in standalone mode, you can actually uh, have up to 64 sounds loaded in here. Um, I'll come in here to the snare line manual light instrument to show you a few things about setting channels. You can see here we've got the uh, MIDI channels. This one is actually set to A1. Uh, so if you were using uh, multiple pages, you might actually see I've got a bell tree loaded here on my uh, second tab. I might actually want to have this loaded to port B1. So that way uh, I typically will have the second page set to the B port, then C, and then D. So that way you're actually able to route audio to 64 different instruments in one instance of Contact Player 2. Um, and then up here, uh, we're able to essentially see these uh, aux tabs on all of the instruments. Um, I'm going to you know, take that away, and I'll keep it loaded up here on my snare line instrument. And clicking this button will actually compact all the instruments down. Clicking this will expand them all out. Um, I'd actually like to keep my bass line small and click the little minus to do that. And then here on the tenor line instrument, you can see I'm not actually seeing all the extra instrument controls. That's because I've clicked the, the little tap space icon here. So I'll keep that compacted down. Now, as you can see, each instrument has a variety of uh, other controls. That's something we'll actually get into in the next video. Uh, and under the aux sends here, that's something that um, uh, corresponds with something here in the output tab that we'll cover in a second. Uh, but here, now that we're uh, talking more about the instrument, you can see here we, we can choose the channel we actually want it to be on here. Uh, this is what output it'll be set to. This is how many sounds are actually uh, being played back at any given time. This is the max number of sounds that you want this instrument to play. Uh, at that point, it will um, start cutting, killing off sounds, and that's an option. Uh, how that handles that is something that can be set here in the option tab. The memory area here, that's how much memory uh, this particular instrument uses. Uh, the purge tab is something we'll cover uh, later in a video. Um, when we talk about DFD, which is another, another issue in itself. Um, this is the solo button, mute button. We can uh, tune up or down our sounds, which is something that say you have a, you know, these were recorded using 14 inch snares, say you want it to sound like smaller 13 inch snares, you could actually uh, tune this up a little bit and have it sound a little bit higher. Uh, this is our 
pan uh, slider, our volume slider. Uh, this is essentially the, the audio output meter. It will tell you uh, the audio levels of uh, playback at any given time. Um, so that's it for this snare line uh, setting. You can also set a variety of uh, things in here. And if you want to learn more about that, you can just go into the uh, user manual and read a little more detail about those. Um, so that's it for that area. Let's pull up the outputs tab. It'll come up here at the bottom. Um, these are the various uh, audio outputs we have available on our audio interface. Uh, you can actually load plugins here. There's four you know, plugin slots for each of these. Uh, this is what's known as the blue uh, strip area. This is the orange strip area. And these four uh, aux strips are the return strips that correspond with the send here. So um, however much audio gets sent, uh, signal audio signal that is, gets sent from here to these, um, if you have this set to a certain level, uh, you can apply other plugins to uh, to these aux strips. So again, that's something you can read a little more uh, about in greater detail uh, in the manual. Um, one other neat thing here is the little keyboard we can have at the bottom. Now you'll notice that some notes are white, some notes are blue. The ones that are blue are the ones that actually have sounds assigned to them. Um, and you might uh, see, like here in the tenorline instrument, that there are orange keys at the bottom. That means key switches are applied there. Uh, again, that's something we'll cover in a later video. Um, and if you want to get into super compact mode here, you can actually push this button, and that'll show just the, uh, the topmost instrument. And we can also hide or move that. If we want to move to the next instrument, you can just hit these arrow keys. Uh, so that's really just if you're really wanting to get more compact. Uh, for the most part, I think most people will want to uh, keep this in a larger mode. Uh, another button that is here is the View tab. Um, I'm working with a smaller screen for these videos, but if you have a larger screen, you can actually make this a good bit larger. And if you want to control um, how big your normal medium or uh, big size are, you can come in here to the Options tab and set them here, um, here under the Interface tab. Um, now there's a few other things here that you can uh, sort of research if you'd like to check out the manual. I would highly encourage that. We're not going to cover it in this video because I think you can uh, get a little more information uh, from the manual without me having to uh, go through each one of them individually. But one item that is important that we'll actually cover in more detail in a later video is the DFD tab. Um, and that's something that will be important to get dialed in to get uh, the, the best performance uh, from Contact Player and your system. But again, we'll cover that in a later video. And I think that's about it. Uh, now, if you're wanting to save uh, or load in a multi that you already got or an instrument, if you come over here to the load and save, you could load in a multi here, or you could save your multi, or you can save individual instruments if you made adjustments to them and want to save them. Uh, or if you click reset, this will actually take you back to square one. Uh, I'm just going to leave this as it is. Um, but you could click OK there if you wanted to start over from scratch. And uh, I think that's basically it for this video. Um, if you wanted to get a little more information about your contact player, see which version you're running, you can click that in here. Uh, but that's it for this video. In the next video, we'll actually be going into a little more detail about the um, instrument collection in VDL and some of these controls that are specific to certain instruments. So if you stick around, we'll see you next time.